Welcome back. And this is Ghana's Youth President. This is a final episode before we walk into the live shows that has presidential candidates battling the up for the grand prize of 11,000 Ghana cities that gets to be shared amongst all the cabinet ministers and, of course, the president. Also, the 20,000 project fund, which is at stake. If you're ready, let's now welcome our such for cabinets, Christian Zockley. You have to listen. The judges are scoring 60%. You're voting star 714, star 13, hash. Christian, are you ready? Six minutes. Take it away. Madam Speaker, judges, my colleague ministers present, colleague honorable members of parliament present, the diplomatic corps, the media, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol duly observed. Madam Speaker, I am Christian Zockley the Minister for Inner Cities and Zungu Development for the Osajifu Cabinet, here to deliver our policy document. Madam Speaker, it is enshrined in Chapter 6, Section 36, Clause 1 of the Ghana's Constitution that, I quote, the state shall take all necessary action to ensure that the national economy is managed in such a manner as to maximize the rate of economic development and to secure the maximum welfare, freedom, and happiness of every person in Ghana and to provide adequate means of livelihood and sustainable, suitable employment and public assistance to the needy." Unquote. Madam Speaker, this very directive principle of our state policy, unfortunately, has not catered, catered, sorry, catered for our Zungus on realistic basis. Madam Speaker, our Zungus remain the epic center of poverty, illiteracy, unemployment, unsanitary conditions, child marriage, and deleterious beliefs and practices. Madam Speaker, constant interventions by successive governments have not brought about the needed change since such interventions often take political twist. Madam Speaker, salvaging our Zongos from their socio-economic quandaries requires more than political ploys adopted to score political points. Madam Speaker, the most important and secured intervention needed at the Zongos is education. Considering the level of vulnerability, Many youth in our Zungus are denied education. There is a need for formal, vocational, and technical education to empower this youth, which the Ostagifo Cabinet would deliver. Madam Speaker, the Ostagifo Cabinet will make provision of, not for, of so basic social amenities such as water, electricity, places of convenience as necessary in facilitating small businesses, good hygiene, and security in our Zungus. Madam Speaker, I know you will be asking for the sources of funding for all these projects. Madam Speaker, we are in positive progressive talks with the Arab Aid, Islamic Bank for Sustainable Growth, Direct Aid, and our Gulf partners. Madam Speaker, efforts will be made to attract gender-based NGOs for females, especially to the Zongos and inner cities. This will help address issues of child marriage, girl-child education, and other socio-cultural beliefs and practices that militate against the development of the child or girl child in our Zungus. Madam Speaker, we at the Osajifo Cabinet believe in actions, not words, in other words, delivering, not promises. So I will end here. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Members. All right. And that was relatively short, but hey, let's go into the question segments. Let me start off with you, Mr. Jignesh Viradia. The policies are quite straight and simple, to the point. One of the points what I understood in terms of the funding that your source of funding could be dependent on the international funding agencies like the Islamic Development Fund yeah. or direct aid. Uh, what are the objectives or say engagement model of the funder and the beneficiary as a inner city Zongo development fund, I mean ministry? Thank you. Madam Speaker, those funds that have earlier been mentioned by my former or my colleague ministers is being funded by the foreign donors that I've mentioned. The alternative solution that we have is go into the Zungu Development Fund, which is not also sustainable. What mm -hmm. we intend doing, that's why it is education. Educate them, give them the right tools, so they themselves will see the essence of helping their Zungus or the inner city development. So out of that, we will get some uh, funding from them themselves to come and help us. So it is self-funding. But direct aid don't fund any money. Direct aid will come in. 
As earlier on, even the Zongo Development Fund that has been set up by the government is being funded, or is being all the funds, the majority of them come from our foreign donors. Very well. Let's do Mr. Michael Niaboyanan. Well, I like your presentation. I like the, um, the energy behind it. Uh, I like the simplicity of your policy statement. Um, but come to think of it, is the education that we have in the Zongos or inner city not sufficient? And how is that so? It is not sufficient. Especially, let me use Zongo for instance. I grew up in a Zongo community in Hawaii called Sab Zongo. We have Makranta where they teach Islamic or Arabic. Um, it's enough, but it's not enough. It's not enough in a broader perspective. Like when we want to see the Zongo youth excel, we want to see the Zongo being delivered from their current state, which they are now, we need to give them um, a wider education, which is the formal, the technical, and the vocational. It is there, but it's not enough. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Christian Zotli. Remember what to do if you want Christian Zotli to accumulate points for the cabinet, Osajifu cabinet, of course, he himself, you go star 714 star 13 hash is the code to dial and ensure that you vote for Christian Zotli if you want him to accumulate votes. Well, all too soon, we are about to draw curtains on our final episode for all the 10 weeks that we've been with you. But of course, just as it has been done, I take the comments and views of the judges. Now, if you're ready, I want to start off with Mr. Michael Niyabwanan. You come from one of the places, predominantly an inner city. What do you make of the ideas that were sold out here? Would you want to buy them on any day? Well, I think... Uh they were over-concentrated on the Zongo communities and left the inner cities. Uh, probably the definition of inner city has not really settled well with uh, people. And I think this is what we should look at um, because we can describe the Zongos as inner cities. Um, and therefore, the, the agenda is to bring more vulnerable communities out of where they are now or where we see them now and it is to do more with infrastructure and the system that we operate in terms of our communities and I think that is where the focus should be but on the main uh, they all did uh, well and uh, I will encourage them their cabinet they should go back work more on these things and come back with brilliant ideas all right coming back is of course our final show when the president take the center stage now to ensure that we know about the holistic way of approaching anything as far as their cabinets are concerned. Let me now come to Mr. Jignesh Viradia. What do you make of all of these today? The young ministers and the innovative mind have crafted and drafted the policies well. Being a new ministry, the expectation was to the mark and all have done good. I see. All right, let's now go to right honorable speaker, Queen Boressa. Let's have your views. Yes, I, I think uh, another ministers did well, but they could have elaborated on the difference between Zongos and inner cities. Probably a brief history of how Zongos even came about would have been lauded. Again, um, hell they say is wealth, um, and most of the Zongo communities are densely populated. I didn't hear policies to depopulate the communities. Um, I didn't hear um, policies um, to improve the road networks to make way for um, fire service and ambulances in cases of emergencies. And also the minister promising um, indomie to uh, my Zongo folks, please also remember or do add Kulukuli, Masa, Wasawasa, Tubani, Sobolo to your menu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A round of applause for all of them. 
This is to say a very big thank you to the Speaker of Parliament, and of course, our judges, all the guest judges we've had all throughout the weeks. It's been an amazing, amazing journey, and I can't wait, just as you at home cannot wait for the final one. If you want the very interesting things that you've heard to culminate into votes, that's what you need to do. Star 714, star 13 hash. Again, the price is at stake. 11,000 Ghana cities is going for the president and also to all the cabinet ministers that are going to win. 20,000 project fund is also at stake. But we're back. We're back. We're back again on your screens with the live shows where the presidents will battle it out. Presidents from the Gold Coast, from the Yasantiwa cabinets, from Republic cabinets, Democrats, and Osajifo cabinets. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we draw curtains down on all of the 10 weeks that we've had. I am truly excited. Remember to follow all our pages on the screen right now. Go there, watch our videos. That would help you to vote for whoever your favorite is. If you're ready, we're taking the break, finally, to wait for the live shows. My name is Kokulumar. I'm truly excited that you can join us. This is how we say bye-bye. We'll see you soon. <laughs>